Hello to everyone. I'm super happy to have Emmerich Ernol from Agora Pulse. Agora Pulse is one of those tools that is going to help you to share everything in social media. But I think you better tell me a little bit more about what is Agora Pulse than Emmerich Ernol. Please, Emmerich, good morning and thank you very much for being here. Yeah, good morning. Thank, thank you for inviting me. Uh, so for the quick intro, Agora Pulse is a social media management tool. Um, you, you know, the listeners or the viewers probably know about Hootsuite and Buffer and maybe Sprout Social. They're a little bit more into social media. We're in that family of tools. And uh, the one thing that got us a, a little bit of success three, four years ago was our inbox management, i.e. we are able to gather all your comments, private messages from all the platforms into one very easy to use inbox. And when we created that inbox, I think we were the first tool to do that in 2014, we basically gave clarity to a chaos of incoming social messages. And that's what made us you know, stand above the crowd at the time. So since then, um, a couple of others have copied us <laughs> and it's it's just fine. We all copy each other somehow. In, in <laughs> um, but that was the one thing that made us unique at the time and still unique as of today because we it was engineered and built to create that clarity on the social media chaos. But obviously we also do publishing as you know, all the other tools we do, uh, we offer reportings and, um, and I, you know, I think we are pretty good at doing, producing um, easy to use and, and fun to use UI, UX, user experience. And like I used to say, um, in Europe, we're pretty good at building good piece of software, not always as good as marketing them like the Americans, um, but we try to get better at that. So I, I love it. Emily. Thank you very much. And I think it's like any company, any startup and any growth hacker needs a tool. That's why we, we decided to put you in the show, man. Um, Emery, tell me a little bit about your background. Uh, in, a, in a very small nutshell, because obviously I've been doing this for 20 years, so it's been a long okay, time. Okay, okay, that's, um, that's... I'm a business lawyer by trade. I studied law and I started as an um, M&A lawyer in an American firm in Washington, D.C. and then in Paris. I quit in 2000 and started my first company with Ben, who is still my co-founder as of today. So Ben and I, we've been building stuff uh, for 19 years. Okay, stuff beautiful. Been, stuff that didn't work in the early days and that was not successful and in 2000 at the end of 2011 we decided to to make a, you know a fourth pivot maybe a third i don't remember okay. um, and it was it was the uh, gora pulse and that's that's so it, it basically got started at the end of 2011 early 2012 and uh took us three four years to get to profit uh so we were profitable at the end of 2015 and yeah and and you know we're 55 people right now maybe 56 Ooh. i don't know we're, we're hiring two or three new people every month so it's hard, it's hard to follow and um we're, we're aiming at around being around 80 at the end of the year and uh we're making 7.5 million euros of annual recurring revenue and yeah, that's not bad that's beautiful to hear man i love it i never i try not to ask but you know if you free to share i love it i love it yeah emmerich how many i'm very sure how many times you have divorced on these 19 years because it's crazy. I mean, I don't know if it has happened to me. I divorced because my girlfriends and wives at the time didn't want me to be doing startups. But did, did you have many divorces and split up? I had one. I had one. So I like okay, I'm a low profile on the divorce side of things, right? Okay. I'm 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 a I'm a I'm a low player. Okay, you're doing very well, man. Nineteen well, I, years, I, and I, and you said after four or five years of being president profitable now it's easy to have a partner but how difficult yeah. was to have a partner for those very, years very difficult very difficult and and luckily the partner i have today is very thoughtful about what i'm doing and who i am and uh she's very respectful of that and supportive mm -hmm. But you know, not everybody can do that and um usually when you find your partner you're may not already be in business or already creating a business and you know sometimes the partner you find at 22 23 i was young mm -hmm. I, I was yeah my 20s yeah, and yeah she had a hard time with this and yes, as well it's not only this but it, it 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 does not help when you're super busy and super focused on building something and, mm. and you, you have little time to dedicate to 
to your mm-hmm. family, basically, because let's face it, yeah. when you're trying to create a business and it's a passion, it yeah. sucks a lot of your time and energy and it's hard mm-hmm. to give it to friends and family and so everything else. I am, I am, I am agree with you and I love we come to this side because I don't see my family at all or my part. Mm-hmm. I don't have a partner now. I don't mm-hmm. see. And it's how much of your time are you dedicating to make uh, Agora Pulse successful? Well, it, until it got, well, I, I it's still, a very very demanding activity of course it's also still a passion of mine mm-hmm. and that's where it it starts and that's where the problem lies because we're passionate usually entrepreneurs are passionate people if you're not passionate about what you're doing you can't do it it's mm-hmm. too hard mm-hmm. so when you're passionate about something it's it's kind of hard to disconnect and and move away from it so yeah there is you know i am always checking my emails responding looking at things and even on weekends and evenings but i try to put you know to be more thoughtful about having time off and dis- and, and and disconnect a bit i i do take a lot more vacation now than i used to even though i still do a little bit of things during vacation it's a lot less than i'm when i'm at the office but it's it's a it's a const it's a balance you have to constantly find and constantly redefine. There is no one day where oh, I'll reach the balance, I'm good now, like nothing else to do. No, it's every day you have to rethink: Am I having the life I want to have? Mm-hmm. Am I being um, respectful of the people around me, or mm-hmm. am I giving them enough, like the minimum viable product of a <laughs> of a relationship, the MVP? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's 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 something you have to constantly reevaluate. There's no. I, I love the fact how uh, every interview goes different sides, but I love the fact that how important and I don't know if it happens to you. How important is your internal feeling on how is the success of the company going? Yeah, well, basically, when MR is going up and to the right, I'm in a good mood. When it's not, I'm in a bad mood. <laughs> Okay, uh, I, I see the same, but could it be possible that you change your MRR, and I'm not joking on that, depending on how you feel as well? Oh, uh, well, no, not really, because, you know, okay. how I feel doesn't have an impact on the business. Uh, the but business, it has an impact of the people that you're around. Yeah, and how you yeah, talk of course. To them and of could course. it be possible? Well, you know, well, not at your size, probably, anymore. At my size, still how we feel. It may represent on how the MRR has grown. Yeah, normally entrepreneurs are pretty lonely with their feelings. And when you feel bad, you try to hide it or at least not show it or not bother people with it too much. You know, you try to keep it for yourself. And when you're out with your friends and family, you try not to, even though it's not Mm. always easy. I always remember one of my good friends who was a super successful entrepreneur in real estate. He kept telling me, Emmerich, we have cursors in life. So there is the family cursor, the friend, the, the, the hobby, sports, you know, entertainment, and, and the business. And you, there will be time in your life where you'll be pushing a cursor up. But if you push one cursor up big time, you cannot really push the others. And w- what he told me, which, I, which resonated with me, is like, if you've pushed one cursor too high, too far, and you've let the other two down too low for too long, then there's one point where you have to stop this cursor that's gone already gone too high or high enough and and start focusing on the others. So like there are times where you're going to focus on your family. There are times where you're going to, you're going to go focus on your business. There are times where you're going to, going to focus on sport and exercising mm. and, and mm. having some you know physical activity. And doing all at once is impossible. You don't have the time and the bandwidth to do them all at once. So like you, you keep you keep pushing one or the other and, and trying to trying to be balanced. Wow, I love it, man. I love it. I love it. How is it going? Just for everyone, um, Agora Pulse, and just changing a little bit the subject, who is Agora Pulse for and what do you do as, as what do you do for them? For well, the users? Yeah, our ideal clients are people who are professional social media managers who are doing social media as a profession. So not all of them are doing it full time, They, but our ideal clients, they have that as a role, like they have to manage social media. I, I'm saying they are, they are our ideal clients because if they're just casually doing a couple of tweets here and there and checking the Facebook page twice a week, they are not going to necessarily need a tool for that, or at least they're not going to feel the need for a tool. So they will not be ideal. Even if they subscribe, they may churn more than 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 
our ideal persona or ideal client. So 30% of our clients are agencies who are doing social media for their clients. And the, the remaining 70% are usually either social media managers, community managers, or marketers that have social media as part of their portfolio of activity that they have to carry on. So those are our, our, our clients. Wonderful. On the process to reach out to the state that you are now, can you tell me a few key, uh, keystones that you say, wow, we did it very well on SEO, we did it very well on the sales guys, obviously the product. If you can give me three hints on what is the secrets of, of growth for a company to where you are right now. Yeah, well, it's you know there's no secret to growth. You know that because if mm. there was, you would be applying it to your business and be a billionaire by now. Um, yes, same, yes, same as everybody else. So I, I I think if there are things that apply to everybody, and we definitely apply to ourselves. Um, couple of the couple of secrets. There are no secrets, but things that I think were the core of our success at the core of our success. Number one, you have to be obsessed by the product and offering the best possible product and the best possible experience. Of course, you only want to do that if you already validated that there is a market, there is a need, you're actually solving a pain for a sufficiently bigger number of people, large number of people. But once you know that there is a large number of people out there who have a pain, a problem that they need a solution for, and your tool can be a solution for that problem, and you focus on that tool to make it better every day or every week or every month, and 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 for keeping the focus on the product is a, is key because there is no successful business in 2019 with a shitty product. It, it, it maybe it was possible in 2002, in 2001, or three, or whatever, in the early 2000s. As of today, it's you know users they expect quality, they expect a good user experience, they expect finding their way around a product with ease. They you know they don't expect the sales force of 2005. Like it's it, those days are gone. So focusing, obsessing about the product, that's definitely uber important. The second thing is obsess about your customer, obsess about customer service, obsess about offering a customer experience beyond the product with you as a company and you know support team, success team, sales team, everybody customer facing. Mm. They have to treat the customers as if the, it was their one chance to woe them. It was their one chance to show them how much you care about them, how much you care about solving their problems, how much you care about being the right solution for them, or how much you care about being a partner for them, not just, just a vendor, but re, a re, really, really a partner, some, someone who's here to help, not just here to take their money and sell them something. So I've always invested into customer support and, in, and offering the best possible customer facing experience. And I did it myself for many years. And I can't emphasize enough how important that is. I mean, everybody tend to claim that they offer top-notch customer support, but when you experience it, you know, you wait two days to get a response. I mean, our average response time at Agora Pulse is, is 20 minutes, 24-7. So 24-7, you can expect a response in 20 minutes. But it's not only the, quanti the quantitative aspect, it's also the qualitative, because the kind of response you can expect should be the best possible type of response. And it, bo bo both in how it's delivered and how nicely it's delivered, but also on the content itself. Like it, it has to contain the solution to the problem. It has to show that everybody who needed to be involved, tech tech team, um, API team, whatever, was involved. And so, and that's you know, it's a big investment. It's not a cheap investment, but I think it's crucial. And it was crucial for us. And I think. We rank number one on customer support against companies like Hootsuite that has 1,200 employees. We have 55, or even mm -hmm. Social. Yeah, and that's again, that's a thing. It's that's a thing that's hard to scale. It's not easy. Um, you need to train your your team. That's a big investment, and you really need to put that as a company culture, like as a as a core element of your co your company culture. That's really really important. And the third thing is do not do what the other big guys are doing. You you, you cannot do business using the playbook of people who've raised hundreds of millions or dozens of millions if you have not. And let, let's face it, most of us have not raised dozens of millions. We have not raised anything. Like we were bootstrapped. Mm. And if you're bootstrapped or have, have raised a little business angel round and you're competing with large, larger companies that have raised a lot of money and have a lot of people, you cannot go by their, play, their playbook. You have to find your own playbook. You have to be creative. You have to do things differently. And I've always done things differently. Everything we've done marketing-wise has been different from what the big guys were doing because 
we in different you know in a thoughtful manner like trying to really bring value in a completely new way and different way so i'm not going i can't go into details because it's it would yeah, be yeah. The, the topic for another podcast interview but everything everything has to be really unique and different and you have to think hard about what could i do that's unique and different and finally when you do that think long term don't think short term mm. i mean if you try to solve your problem for two months from now and that's all you care about you're probably not going to make it two years from now everything we've always accomplished in terms of building brand awareness and 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 you know and the great product and great customer service and everything else was always like to take us to where we want it to be years later. Like, where do you want, do we want to be in 2021? Okay, if we want to be there in 2021, we have to start today doing this, this and that. And yes, this is not gonna pay off for months and months and months, mm -hmm. and that's hard. But if you're not making that long-term investment, trust me, two years from now, you'll still be in the same spot and, and you will have a hard time. Um, progressing uh, so wow man i love it these three points i think is customer service um product and don't play like the big guys are doing play in your own path yeah, and, and think long term always always and try to solve long the term. problem for the long term more than for the short term the you know short term is 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 a beast it, it can eat you alive if you don't if you're not careful <laughs> uh, i love it man and um, i have two questions which i i think i i, I probably know where you going um recommend to everyone a book that really changed your life a book that really changed your life if you can uh, recommend change my life as a person yes not, please as a person you are a person yeah as a as, as a professional person yeah as, um, you can choose yeah that, no there's a book uh, um there's a book i like very much that that has changed and that's behind a lot of things that we promote in 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 our company culture it's called extreme ownership and um it's 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 written by a navy seal who's basically explaining what he's learned on the battlefield as a navy seal as a soldier mm -hmm. and 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 is now a, a consultant helping businesses and so like in a nutshell extreme ownership is the principle that at the end of the day you are responsible for everything that's going on in your company in your team mm -hmm. in your job and there is no oh it's not me it's the market it's not me it's my it's my colleague it's not me it's my co-founder it's not no 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 at the end of the yeah. day you're fucking in charge and whatever you have you're in charge of and that's your job and if something goes wrong it's on you and it does it does impact um the way you see your responsibilities and the way you treat people because that doesn't go right in my company eventually i'm responsible for it that's it there, there's no excuse uh, there's no book from leif babin and it's extreme uh, um ownership which i'm certainly going to order the audiobook for today just to let yeah you know. joko willink is the main is the main author joko willink oh, okay wonderful and then that's book do you have any other book recommendation for anyone yeah one one i like very much is called radical candor um and it's a book about how to deal with giving feedback and receiving feedback in a, in a team and it all it has also changed um it has also changed a lot of how we handle giving feedback and receiving feedback for example after reading that book we have a management committee every friday and you know i decided that every at every management committee we should have a radical candor moment uh, so it's me and five of my vps or c level or call them what they want in a company our size it's kind of funny to have vps but um there is 10 minutes where someone from our team and it's going to switch so every week we change and we take another person is going to receive the the feedback from the other team members what could i improve um what haven't what where have i failed in the last week what have i done wrong you know what advice could you give me and it starts with me i.e i am looking forward to getting the feedback of my team every week um and i think it's it's it it creates a culture of if the CEO and the co-founders are open to be criticized and to receive mm. criticism, constructive criticism, then that means that I should be too. You know what I mean? <laughs> if, uh, if, if the top management wants to know what they could improve, then everybody in the company should be open to know what they can improve. We, I, lo I love the fact, and I'm going to, oh man, you're giving me homework for the next week. I love it because in here we don't have close meetings, everything, everyone sits in the same area. And, and I think it's a must that everyone knows everything about everything, you know, and it's good. Um, 
we just to finish up because I know you had a busy day and you say, Gerald, let's do it now, which I love it. Thank you very much. Uh, tell me two li one life hack and one work hack for everyone to know. One life hack, a life hack, something like having a shower at cold shower in the morning, waking up at four o'clock, life hack. And then one work hack. I don't. I don't. Really I don't wake up at four o'clock because I need to I sleep know. at least eight okay. hours in a night. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, that that would be a good uh, life hack. Yeah. Maybe you know you my life. Like... My life hack. I don't really have a life hack. I don't. I'm not I'm a big sure believer. You do, man. I'm not I'm sure a big. You do. I'm not a big believer of life hack. W one thing. One thing I do. So life and work hack, right? Work okay. life and yes. personal life. On the personal life, I mean, find the one thing that you enjoy doing outside of work, outside of building a business, because building a business can eat you. It's so much consuming. Mm -hmm. So my the thing I've found for me is kite surfing. I love doing Ooh, kite surfing. And basically, when I kite surf, I don't think about work. I don't think about the business. I don't think about anything work related. And it's it's really liberating. And 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 I and I love doing it. I'm looking forward to my next next guide trip or my next guide session. So find that one thing that takes you away, that that takes your brain away from constant constantly thinking about you know professional stuff or or business stuff. That's that's important to be able to um, get out, get away. That's that's the the, the one. And on the on the work hack. Um, Every morning, I'm, I take the train to go to the office because I live in Paris. So every morning in the train, I take notes and I say, okay, what are the, the two things I want to get it done today? You know, what are the, 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 the core things that needs to be achieved today? And I write them down and I make sure when I go back in the evening that they, they're done. And mm. because we can, it's really easy to get disrupted and go left and right and do emails and get to a meeting and discuss on Slack about whatever with your team members, blah, 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 blah. And at the end of the day, you're like, oh shit, I didn't get anything accomplished. Like it was all over the place today. Um, if your life could be like that every day if you don't pay attention. So like I, I'm, try I'm trying to be mindful about, okay, I'm, I'm gonna go through all that mess because I know every day is, is hmm. um, a lot of things coming at me that requires my attention and that will take me away from what I want to get done, but I will get those two things done every day, whatever they are. Maybe it's a 15 minute thing. It's not, it doesn't have to be long, but it's something I have to do today. And I, I have two for today and I have two every day, so. <laughs> I love it, Amrit. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed this interview. Um, for everyone, please um, check out uh, Amrit. Go to, yes, sorry. Go to Agora <laughs> Polls. Uh, check out Amrit, please. And please um, remember to send emails with love. Please, Emery, do not hang up. I'm going to close now the session. And thank you very much for listening. My pleasure.